So welcome everyone. My name, my name is Fausto Puglisi from CyberTrade University, and today we're going to talk about the three rules to be a smarter trader in this bear market. You see what's happened in the market. We're down about 450 points. We had a little bit of rally yesterday, but it looks like we wiped all that out. And you could see that everyone keeps talking about the, um, you're buying the dips, buying the dips, buying the dips. Well, you know what? Um, if you've been following me for the past two months, and if you understand about how trading works, you could see that every time we get a little bit of a rally, it's also it's an opportunity to short. So listen, I know some of you are doing um, are flat, some are doing okay, some of you are doing really terrible. Well, today I'm going to talk about some of the, how to be a very smart trader because I'm not going to teach you how to make money. I'm going to teach you how to stop losing it, and that is what big everyone's biggest problem is. And that's what we're going to learn. Now, listen, there are a lot of great stocks that are moving in today's markets. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about them. I'm going to talk about level three, level four. I'm going to show you some of the things that we trade in today's markets. But please be patient, and we'll get there. But before we get started, just a quick little risk disclosure. I just want you to understand I'm not making any guarantees, no warranties, no promises. The only thing I can guarantee you is there is no such thing of a guarantee. That's all I can promise. But I'm here for educational educational purposes and hopefully um what we'll be able to learn today will help you to become a smarter and better trader and see if it's something for you or not now this is basically what we're going to we're going to be learning um in our trading we're going to talk about the three rules okay how to be a smarter trader where you don't have to work harder we're going to talk about how to follow the big money um we're going to talk a little bit about how to do it as a day trade and as a swing trade we're also going to talk about you know, how you could take a small account and, you know, make it into a swing trade or make it into a big trade. You don't have, you don't need a lot of money to do this. A big misconception people have. And then also we'll talk about how to be overall a, a, a well-rounded trader as in having the right tools, be able to uh, be a little diversified on what you're looking to do. But this is not a full-time uh, trade. This is not a full-time uh, job, and that's the way you have to look at it. As much as we would like to do it as a full-time job, you can do it as a full-time job, but you really don't have to. So question number one, are we missing opportunities um, entering stocks too late? Now, a lot of us make that mistake, and, you know, and that's really the question you have to ask yourself. Are you chasing it? Are you getting at the wrong time? Do you feel like every time you're buying it, the thing reverses on you? Do you feel like you waited too long and the thing takes off on you? We're going to talk about that. Question number two, do you wish you could be consistently see the future of the market? Now, that sounds like a, a little bit more exaggerating. How could you see the future? Well, I'm going to teach you how to read the future. And you know what the future is? Where are all the buyers and sellers? See, everyone is always focusing on the past. And what is the past? indicators, charts, but how about if you just follow the money? That's what we have to look at. Then you answer to all these questions of having those issues. Well, guess what? You're at the right place. So that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at all these little things that are going to help you fix those problems that a lot of people have in everyday trading. Now, listen, you look what's happening in a bear market here, you know, how we have a big rally how things have great opportunities, how they go up and all of a sudden they come back down. Um, but you could see stocks like Sava we were trading and you hear I have a stock in one day, in one day it goes from a $38 to 50. How is that even possible? The market's down, Sava goes up. Because Sava's, you know, this is the things that we're looking for. We're looking for things that are moving, things that have good volatility, you know, and, you know, not always thinking the opposite. There are, and seeing things that have big percentage movers like this, like Mara, another one, stock goes from nine all the way to 11 in one day, you know, TBLT, here's a stock from 10 a.m., goes from $6 to 1130, which is, I don't know, an hour and a half, $9. You know, if you bought a thousand shares of that stock, you make yourself $3, that's $3,000. There's about a three quarters of a million dollar salary right there. If you only got less than, let's say, 20% of that, you're talking about a six figure salary. They're there every day. 
You just got to know when to get in and when to get out. And how do you know that? It's not just by looking at a chart. It's looking at where the buyers and sellers are. And that's where people make their big mistake. Because when you're seeing things that are moving, not only as a day trade, but also as a swing trade, like we're looking at Starbucks right here, who's pushing that stock up? Where are those buyers? You know, is it too late to jump in? That's what we got to look at. So now that you know a little bit about it, um, now you basically want to know, how does Fausto know which stocks to trade? Because at the end of the day, do you really care what you trade or do you want to make money? Because if you care what you trade about, you're in the wrong place. Because I don't care what I trade. I don't take things personal. Um, there's probably stocks I own that I am totally against of their, you know, their practices, you know, if it's, you know, whatever it could be, maybe they're against your political beliefs. That's fine. But you know what? We're all the same party and we're the party of traders because at the end of the day, my wife doesn't care what I traded. She just wants to know, you got two kids in college. Are you able to pick up that bill? Okay. Um, you know, are, are we able to, you know, go on that vacation we want to do? Oh, I didn't want it. It was a stock that I traded and looked at and, you know, honey, it's everything that we don't like. We are against. They're like, but it, but it did go up 300% today. And she's like, well, why didn't you trade it? Well, because I don't believe in it. Well, then I'm in the wrong business. You shouldn't care what you trade. The only thing you care about is less risk, more reward. And it's all about following the big money. Now, before I explain how I do that, I want to introduce myself. For some of you who don't know who I am. Um, basically, I've been doing this for over 25 years, which is unheard of. I started one of the first educational schools in the industry. Now you have, I don't know, maybe thousands that are out there. Now, all of a sudden, everybody wants to learn how to teach people. Well, I started the first one, one of the first ones, probably like five of us that started. Uh, I've been doing it since 1995. And the way I've learned how to become very successful is I learned right here on Wall Street. I live here in New York. This is the financial capital of the world. Um, I got some of the biggest traders that live in my own town. Some of them live across the street from me. And I deal with them on a regular basis. And let me just tell you something. Do not take this in a bad way, but you are not going to beat them. And it's not a bad thing because guess what? You could join them. You got to know where they are. You got to follow where the big guys are. You know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a, 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 an example. I love fishing. Okay. It's one of my hobbies. I love fishing. I love gardening. Hell, I even started a home living channel, believe it or not. And um, here in Long Island, we're very well known. We have, we have a lot. It's a fishing warp. So I do a lot of tuna fishing. So who am I to know where the, where the tunas are? Okay, as much as everyone might, you might love tuna, say, hey, you do tuna fishing, how do you catch them? You know how I catch tuna? I go find the people that catch the tuna, okay? Who catches the tuna? The big fishing ships, those people that are, that are dredging. Now, think about it. It's like, wow, isn't that cheating? Listen, at the end of the day, I'm not cheating. I still want to go out there and dump, you know, $500,000 to go fishing to come back empty. I didn't go out there to go, you know, to to fish because, you know, I'm out there. I go out there because I want to catch fish. So what do you do? You follow the big boys. And who are the big boys? The big boats. And the big boats pay the little boats like me. And that's what you have to look as trading. There are people out there trading, and you just got to follow with where the big money is because the big money will fall into the little people like us. Does that kind of explain it? And that's why I've been featured at some of the biggest news stations, you know, from NASDAQ, CNBC, Bill Bloomberg, all of them. I'm also an author at, you know, my uh, author of How to Beat Market Makers at Their Own Game. Now, the good thing is this. If you stick around to the end, I will give you my book for free, okay? So without going there and going spending, you know, 40 to $50 for a book, I got great news. I'm going to give it to you for free. Now, this, this session is not about me, okay? I'm not here to tell you how great I am and how much money I made. And, you know, watching me driving fancy cars and talking about the nice town I live. It's not about me. It's about you because you're the one that need to know, can Fausto teach and Cybertrade University 
teach me how to do it on my own. Okay. But the way you have to learn how to do it on your own is first, you got to stop lo- losing money and you got to start, you know, having an ego thinking that you know more than the rest of the street, because if you are, you're in the wrong business. You need to know what they're doing and that's where it's going to lead into. So the things that, uh, that people are doing is they're doing things backwards. And I'm going to hear, I'm going to ask questions, I'm going to take you some quizzes, I'm going to do some things with you, but you got to know how to play the market. And the market that people are making is they keep looking what's behind them. They're looking at their rearview mirror, okay? And what that rearview mirror is, um, I don't know, indicators, bulger bands, moving averages, because it's those things that are delayed. You don't want to be delayed, you want to be looking what's in front of you. So that's what most traders do. But if you want to look at the future, the future is where is the momentum? Where are those buyers, which I'm going to teach you. And that's all about seeing what the future entails. So today I have three effective rules I'm going to talk about with you. Okay. Now, these are things you're going to follow. The rules I'm going to talk about is this. First of all, where are the hedge funds? Where are the institutions? Where are the market makers? Okay. Because they are the ones that control the market. So let's talk about rule number one. Okay, rule number one is this. Remember I told you, you shouldn't care what you trade, okay? What you should care about is risk. We, uh, we teach our students three letters. Tradable, it's the three T's. Tradable, trend, and trap. The first T we gotta look at is We have to find stocks that are going to give us the least amount of risk with the high amount of reward. So secret number one is this. We work off what's called the big percentage gainers and losers. Okay. Now you can see right here, uh, what the hell is ABOS up a hundred percent? Holy crap. That's a lot, but what the hell is it? I don't care. What is PE? Let me get my little pointer so you can follow along. What is PE, uh, PEPG? I have no idea, but it's up 90%, okay? Why isn't, a, a, why isn't uh, Apple up there? Why isn't Tesla up there, okay? Does it matter? Because at the end of the day, if I made 100% on a stock, which I know some of you wish you could do that, could even do that in, in a lifetime, but we're seeing stocks that are doing it in a day. But your question is, is it too late to jump in? Is it too late to jump out? And most importantly, which one out of all these stocks are going to give you the least amount of risk with the high amount of reward? Which I mean by that is, does it have a very good spread? Is it, you know, is it a two hundred and seventy dollars stock or is it a nine dollars stock? You know, why I got to spend a lot of money when I could, I could spend a lot less? These are the things that you got to look at. Let's talk about Sava, for example. Okay. Sava was a good stock that we traded. But by the way, just out of curiosity, I don't keep talking here, but did anybody here see Sava lately? S-A-V-A? What happened in the past week? Just give me a yes or no. Here I'm talking away and I'm like, I forget I'm talking to an audience of over, over you know, a few hundred people. I tried, uh, I tried it about a week ago, Mark. Okay. Miller, you didn't. Tom, you didn't. Craig, you did. Lori, you didn't. Brian, what about you? Bob Berry, I didn't hear from you. Darlene Hills, Doug, Henry says he missed it. So everybody here, give or take, missed it, okay? Look at this stock. At, nine, at 10 o'clock this morning, it ran from about $28, and by 11 o'clock, it ran to $34. You'd probably be done for the day. And then look what ended up happening. Right around three o'clock, it picked up from 34 and it ran all the way up to about $40. So, and then from there, the following day, two days later, it goes from 38 to 50. So it's all about, and meanwhile, the stock market's going down, okay? Now, how do I find this stock? Very simple. I, I was in the big percentage gainers. So you wanna talk about a crystal ball? That's my crystal ball. Every single one of you have, a percentage gainer and loser on your platform. If you don't have it, call your brokerage firm, write it down, and make sure they add it on there. Which, by the way, at the end of this presentation, like I promised you, not only am I going to give you my book, but I am going to show you live in the market hours 
the stocks, how we find them, you know, and see them if it actually works. So yes, we do practice what we preach. Now, rule number two, don't hold a day trade overnight. Big mistake, big sucker mistake. Why people hold positions overnight? Because they don't want to take a loss. That's the reason why. Okay, now listen, you can't convert a day trade, which is which basically what that means is that you're just trading a stock for the day to make a day's pay. Once you hold a position overnight, now it becomes a swing trade. Okay, that's the difference between a day trade and a swing trade. So swing trades are done into design. Day trades are made are done into design. You can't mix and match. Okay. The reason why people hold a position overnight is because they don't want to take a loss. And you know what I'm talking about because some of you made that mistake. And now what happens, now you get yourself in a hole. And then what happens, listen, it's not a 50-50. It's like 80-20. If you're losing money in that stock, trust me, it's probably going to be a loser going into the close. There's no reason why you, know, you think it's going to go up other than you're hoping it's going to go up. It doesn't work that way. You got to trade smarter. Okay. Not harder. AP, uh, look at APMX. Look at this stock. Great push. Everything goes up. Somebody, all of a sudden, somebody buys it at the highs and like, oh, you know, I can't. Now I got to hold on to it. I want to take a loss. I paid 14. Now it's at 11. No problem. Come in the next morning. Boom. Now you're down to eight. Is that, has that ever happened to anybody? Just out of curiosity. Ever happened to anybody? You ever make that mistake? Number one, call the rule. T. Mill is being honest. Thank you very much, T. I appreciate it. And you know what? Sometimes you got to admit that you made these mistakes because how are you going to fix that problem? Okay. Next one, ATXI. Great runner up. Stock goes up beautifully. Sure enough, what does that stock do? Goes to 1050. Don't want to take a loss. Wake up the next morning. Boom. Look what ends up happening. Stock goes up, 42, wake up next morning, 38, Carvana. It's every single stock. Um, what was the other one that was pretty big? Uh, let me bring it up. F uh, Fed Federal Express, right? Didn't FedEx do the same thing? Let me bring up, what happened to FedEx? Was it FedEx? FDX. What happened to FedEx, right? Yeah, let me bring up this chart right here. You own the stock on a swing trade, okay? You're at 240. Oh, but it's FedEx, right? And next thing you know, you hold it's at it's at 230. Let me zoom in a little bit closer so you guys could see this a little bit better. Then you're like, oh, maybe it's finally coming back. I don't. I, now I made my money back. The trend is down. And you wake up the next morning. You're at 205. You wake up. Now it's at 160. Okay. Now you become from a swing trader, a day trader, a swing trader. Now you're an investor. And then sure enough, you're like, oh, I can't sell that 160. Could have sold that 200 yesterday. Yeah. And what happened? Now it ended up, it went all the way down to 140. I mean, these are some of the biggest carnal mistakes that people make. So rule number two, do not hold positions overnight. Okay. Or average down. Rule number three, Follow the big money. Now, are you all ready for the good stuff? Okay, because now this is going to teach you and show you that you've been trading blind. I don't care who taught you. I don't care where you came from. Okay, but if you think you're smarter than Wall Street, then you're in the wrong business. These people are trading billions and billions of dollars every day. Think how much smarter and better trading decisions. Let me ask you this. How much is it worth to you if I'm able to show you where you could see almost 70% of the volume of a stock where the buyers and sellers are? How much smarter and better trading decisions you'll make? Well, that's what we're going to cover. So we got four ways of viewing data. What is the data? The data is how do we know what the price of the stock is doing? How it's going up? How is it going down? Who's buying and selling it? So there are four views. Level one, level two, level three, and level four. I want to start off with level one and level two, okay? Which is pretty much everybody here has. We're looking at Apple, okay? We're looking at a level one version, and this is basically like looking off, uh, I don't know, Bloomberg or, 
your maybe your phone or whatever it is. You want to get a quote. So it's got a lot of data. It tells you the open, the close, the buyers, the sellers. You know, it has a lot of lot of information here. It tells you book value, P ratio, all this crazy stuff. Nice looking charts, news. But how does that really mean it's going to go up? Like, how do you know it's going up? How do you know it's going down? What is the bid and offer going to do for you? It doesn't do nothing. Then something came out, something called NASDAQ Level 2. So NASDAQ Level 2, if you have – by the way, does anyone here have NASDAQ Level 2? Let me just add a curiosity. Just give me a yes or no. Anybody have Level 2? Henry, you have it. Robert, okay. Everyone has it. What does it cost? It's free. That's all it's worth. Let me tell you what level two is so everybody can understand. Let me get my crayons out here. So anyway, these are your buyers and these are your sellers. The buyers are the people who are on the bid. The sellers are the people on the ask. You got three columns. The first column is a four-letter abbreviation of a brokerage firm or, or an exchange like the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ Exchange. Whoever wants to buy for the most amount of money up on top, is up here. Whoever wants to sell their shares for the least amount of money is up on the top up here. Whoever wants to buy for less money is down at the bottom. So this is who wants to buy it. This is the price they want to buy it for. And this is how many shares they want to buy. Everything is multiplied by 100. The problem with level two, it only gives you a fraction of the data. It only tells you what that stock is trading at that exchange at the highest bid and the highest offer. So it's not giving you all the data. Now, my question to you is this. I want to do a poll. And my poll question is this. Do you have NASDAQ total view or which what I like to call level three? Who here has it? Just give me a quick, and be honest. Because I would like to share this data with all of you because let me explain something to you. You need to see where you're, where you're at with the rest of society, okay? You want to know why people make money? This is going to answer. You want to know why you're losing money? This is going to answer it for you, okay? Um, Lori says, uh, does that apply to all stocks not trading overnight? Yes, Lori. Absolutely. It applies to options, futures, Forex. Unless it's done into design, you don't do it, okay? All right, now let me share it now. Listen, I, listen. Just can I be, can I be honest with some of you. We don't. I only. Not, not everyone's answering this. Answering this poll. Don't be scared, Doreen. Just answer the question, Mike. I know who you are. Please don't let me call you out because I hate seeing people lose money. I have trained hundreds of thousands, millions of people over the years. If you can't answer this question, just say I'm not sure. OK, but by not answering this question, you are basically in denial and you're doing more harm to you than good. All right. Now I'm going to end the poll. I'm going to share it. OK, so you could see close to over 80 percent of you don't have it. Now, please pay attention very closely because what you're about to be, see right now, you're going to be really ticked off. And whoever trained you, you're going to be like, wait a minute, how come? You didn't tell me this, and I'll tell you why, because they're not traders. They never worked as a market maker like I did. All right, so now let me show you what we're going to talk about. By the way, um, have any of you seen me on NASDAQ? Okay, um, here's a, a photograph. I'm on NASDAQ. Um, I'm, I'm a, a guest speaker there. They actually hire me to teach all their clients how to use and how to trade on the exchange. Okay, now listen. NASDAQ should be, you know, out of everyone out there, they come to us because why? We do a great job of doing it. And, you know, and they know the importance of the reason why people fail is because they just don't know how to trade. You think you know how to trade? Well, NASDAQ doesn't think you do. Okay. Why? Because you don't know how the market actually works. In other words, if you own a car, you should know how a car works. You should know how the engine works. God, but there's a problem. You should know why you got four tires, you know? This, just using a metaphor to kind of explain it. So let me, let me go into detail what we're looking at. 
what you're looking at is some ridiculous amount of numbers. And I know you look at this and it looks very overwhelming. Don't worry, I get it, okay? But let me kind of explain it more in detail because 95% of what you're seeing here, you don't need. These are your buyers. These are your sellers. Now, when you were looking at an exchange like on level two, all you're seeing is this guy right here. The highest bid and the highest offer. Now, what you're seeing is you're seeing every single order around the entire world that are trading, you know, AAL, which is American Airlines, every single person around the entire world, what they want to buy for. Now, I have a question for all of you to answer. How do stocks go up and go down in the market? Can you answer that question? How do they go up and go down? No, David, this is for everything. New York, everything. No markets, not institutions. Thank you very much, Robert. Lori, you're correct. Buyers and sellers. Supply and demand, right? Just everyone else. Just write S&D. Just write S and D or just B, or or B and S, just so I know you don't. We're on the same page. If you don't believe that, then you're in the wrong place. Okay. Thank you very much, John Thomas. Good. Melissa Donald Snow. Good. Good. I want to make sure you guys are paying attention because what you're about to see is going to be very disturbing. The issue with this is that when you look at it, there's a lot of buyers and sellers, right? But what drives it? 5,000 shares, 7,000 shares. What drives it when you see people looking to buy 126,000 shares, that's what drives it. Not the people that want to sell 90 shares, but maybe the people that are right down here that want to buy 16 and 17,000 shares. Okay. Now you do the math. 16,000. How about this? 126,000 shares times $16. How much money is that? Anybody want to take a guess? I'll give you a guess. It's a hell of a lot more than you're going to buy. How about that? Okay. We're going to make it easier. So how do we utilize this data? Well, remember, how do stocks go up and go down? Buyers and sellers. Now, what you're doing backwards, which you probably don't realize, is that you were always taught how to trade with supply and demand. No, no, I'm sorry. Support and resistance. You cannot have a support level unless that buyer is out there. So here you're looking at a stock, um, AFRM. It starts out, oh, about up here. Uh, what is that? Uh, 2530. And it goes all the way down. And it stops specifically right around here, around this $22.90. Now, why did it stop right around there and started going back up? The reason why is because when you look at at the exchange itself, there is a 45,000 share seller right there at 2285. Now look at this. There are two shares, 700 shares, 100 shares, 45,000. That's over a million dollars worth of stock out there to looking to buy, okay? Not $44 worth of stock. You're talking a million dollars worth of stock, okay? Now, once again, how do stocks go up and down? Buyers and sellers, not support and resistance. Because unless you have that buyer out there, you're not going to have a support level out there. So that's where you're doing it backwards. Let's, let's look at another example here. Okay. Here we have a stock that's going up. And we look at, we're looking at NEO. Stock goes from 1440, goes all the way up and stops right at 1540. Why did it stop at 1440? At 1540? Because there was a 93,000 share seller out there. Once again, if I own a stock, right? You own a stock. We want to know where everyone else is selling it, right? Wouldn't it be nice and easier to kind of see where those sellers are? So we can get out with them where they are because I don't want to be in a stock knowing that I'm going to hit a brick wall with a bunch of sellers. I want to know that they're out there. Well, now you can. Now you can. And there it is. Because if you didn't see that, guess what? 
stock goes from 1540 all the way down to 1450. Not because you got in the wrong trade, not because, you know, some stupid jerk on TV said something that brought it down, not because, you know, all of a sudden it's raining outside or your wife or a husband are yelling at you. It's because <laughs> there was a big seller out there and you were not prepared to see the future because you're looking at the rear view mirror, but not in the front view mirror. So where would you get out? Well, Tom, let's think about it. If everybody's selling at 1550, where do you want to sell? 16, 18? I think I want to sell 1550 also. Okay? Think about it. To have to be a very smart and better trade, you have to have a game plan. There's your game plan. But don't worry, we got we got a lot more to talk about. So let's go over a couple more examples. Let's look at this example right here, okay? Um, I'm going to do a poll question. Is this stock going up or going down, everyone? Let's see if you can answer this question. I'm going to do a poll. But by the way, if you can't answer this question, you better quit trading, okay? I mean, please, I'm doing you a favor. You might not like what I say. I might be a little brash, but I'm just telling you right now, please tell me what you feel. It's a very simple question. It's not, I'm not getting complicated. Looking at this chart, is the stock going up or going down? All right, let me end the poll and let me share the results. So pretty much 4% of you said it's going up. 96% of you going down. First of all, I don't know why you said it's going up. Could you, please, could you please explain to me? Maybe you made a mistake. You clicked the wrong button. But if you really thought the stock was going up, you please, I'm doing you a big favor. Quit trading right now because I have no reason to understand what made you thought the stock was going up. Maybe you're counting you know, all the different red candlesticks and someone taught you about soldiers or whatever. This stock is going down. Okay. All right. Now, the next question I have for all of you is this. When's it going to go back up? What do we need for this stock to go up? Thank you very much, Mark. T. T. Miller, you don't know? You don't know what's going to make this stock go up? How about buyers? How about buyers? Right, Tom? Right, Glenn? Judas, good to see you, buddy. Right, Joyce? You need buyers. Now, the thing is this. Do you see buyers on a chart? No. No. That's the past. We got to look at the future. The chart doesn't show us the future. So what we got to do is we got to go and check on, let's go on NASDAQ Book Viewer. So I'm looking for buyers. So I'm going to look at the left side because that's where the buyer's located. So I see 2,000 share sellers, 7,000, 1,800. And then when I get down to 1685, I'm like, holy crap, there's 126,000 shares looking to be bought at that price. I don't know about you, but that's a hell of a lot more money than what I'm going to dish out. So in theory, what do you think is going to happen? Do we, sell, you know, do we buy more? Do we sell it? Well, like it or not, hope all you want. The only thing that you have in your favor is that there's that big buyer out there at 1685. And guess what? When it got to 1685, what did it end up doing? It shot right back up to 1740. Now, that's not just luck, okay? That's called skill. Because now that buyer made what's called a support level. And listen, support levels get broken all the time, which I didn't even get to that yet. Yet. We can get to that next. But I just want you to understand the basic trading of 101, which a lot of you still don't, are not using. You know, a lot of you make trading so much more complicated than what it is. You really do. You know, I mean, like, if you just knew, this, you just knew supply and demand, you, you basically will be about maybe between 60 and 70% past, you know, it's half the battle. But everybody out there is making more complicated. Six monitors, 15 indicators, 
10 different brokerage accounts, all these newsletters, 15 different courses. How about just following buyers and sellers? That's what it comes down to. Now, I'm going to eliminate all the charts, okay? Let's just go right to the data, all the confusing numbers. Now, if you were trading NEO, where do you think resistance levels would be on NEO? Can anybody tell me? Archie said I hit the wrong button before. It's going down. Okay, Archie. Like I said, I knew some people make that mistake. And then what it is, you probably were a little more, you know, and this is a mistake. Some, sometimes you're a little bit more, uh, what's that word I'm looking for? Uh, not gun shy, but a little too, little too quick on your, your reaction, which is fine. Um, but where's resistance levels? If you were looking at this stock right here, where would you find resistance? You know, you got a little too excited. <laughs> there you go. Jay, correct. You're right. Mark, you're right. Nancy, you're right. Tom, you're right. But what number is that? Well, if we were looking for resistance, what is going to resist the stock from going higher? Sellers. So let's go look where the sellers are located. And we're working our way down. Now, there are a lot of sellers out here, right? Tons of sellers. Now, there are eight share sellers, 1,000 share sellers. But when we get down all the way down here, 1935. At, that's where resistance. Now, the stock is trading at 1897. Now, some people are like, oh, this got to be a good buy. I love NEO. Okay, great. But you're coming up to about 35 cents from now. You're coming up to a very big seller in a stock, okay? Now, when I change the slide here, when you look at this, you might be like, oh, this stock's going higher. Look how great it is. Look at the trend. It's doing a double top. Looks like it's going to break it right now. Whatever, whatever your theory is, okay? But – you forgot that the reason why it's stopping right there and it's not breaking out yet is because that seller's out there. And if you didn't see that, guess what? It went from 13, uh, 1935 right down to 1880. And it kept testing it and testing it, testing it again, 10 o'clock, 1010, 1020, 1030, eventually gave up and it came right back down. So when you're looking at a stock that's trading, you got to follow the money, you know, and listen, and to answer one of the people's questions out there that said it, someone said, is these real orders? You're damn right it's a real order. And if you don't believe it's a real order, when I invite you in my trading room, I will find an order like that. We'll use your money if you technically have 1.9 million in your account and we'll see, we'll execute and we'll see how that works out for you. Okay. Because I'm, I'm just going to get a kick out. I want to see how you're going to get out of it. <laughs> all right. But yes, that is a real order. First of all, the exchange won't even let you post an order unless you have the money in your account. So how are you going to put an order out there? Now, we call these things iceberg orders. Um, so you probably, if you're reading about it, um, here at Cybertrain University, I came up with the word after watching the movie Titanic. Very sad story. I assume a lot of you know what I'm talking about. Um, didn't work out too well for the Titanic, but they hit that iceberg and guess what? All those wonderful people died. Okay. Because, you know, I don't want to go in detail because what, but, but, but for, for you, how many times have you bought a stock? And like, as soon as you bought the damn thing, it goes down. And how many times have you sold the stock? And as soon as you sold it, the damn thing goes up. And you know why? Sometimes you feel that sometimes people are watching you. They're not watching you. You are not watching them. And that's why we have to change things. So how, do you, um, how can we utilize this power for iceberg orders to, to maybe do it towards swing trading? Because the same thing applies on swing day trading. You could use it towards swing trading. Now, let me talk about something else. I'm going to talk about level four. Okay. Now, um, if you thought level three is pretty good, Wait till you see what I show you right now. This is a little bit more of what we have, more of a heat map, okay? On a heat map, you're going to see it not only if they're out there, but now how long have they been out there? 
Are they adding to their position? Um, you know, all these and be able to see it a little bit more clear other than looking at numbers, because some of us, you know, looking at those numbers, they change pretty quickly. I mean, we get older. We're not as fast and savvy as we were, but now we'll be able to see it on a chart. So let me show you what we have here. Stock right here is at nine dollars and sixty cents. We're looking at uh, what is this? This is Carnival Cruise Lines. Stock goes down and you'll notice see all these red lines right here. These red lines started kicking in right around 1030. OK, and right around 1030, you could see that there is a hundred and thirty four thousand share buyer. A hundred and let me circle this so you can see what I'm talking about right here. See this right here. 141,000 share buyer, another 52,000 share buyer, and then even up here, you start to get another 100,000. So you could see that the stock started going down. It started like hovering here, right? Why would it stop right at right around that price? Because buyers started coming, kicking in. And not only that, even when it got to 887, these buyers at 870 and 866, even down here at 850, are still want to buy it. So there was a huge, concrete foundation not even a brick wall a foundation which is you know it's pretty damn thick right there at that floor so what do you think is going to happen at 870 okay as much as you might not be a fan of like oh I, I had a bad experience i will never go on carnival cruise line let's say you're a big cruise fan this is what i'm talking about i'm anti-carnival you know they, they screwed up my room this i would never go to them doesn't mean I'm not going to trade the stock because guess what? If you saw the buyers out there and you got in when they got in, you know what? If you made 30 cents on the stock on a thousand shares, made $300, do that every day. You're talking about, I don't know, $75,000 salary. Who doesn't want that job? You think I'm going to hold it against them that I made money on their stock? I don't think anyone really cares. Okay. So, but the question I have for you is this. Did you need an indicator to tell you that, that support levels were at 836? Did an indicator tell you that with the Bollinger Band, the MACD, the Stochastic, the Moving Average, yada, yada, yada? Did you need that? I didn't think so. How about this? Looking at a stock, EDU, goes from $19, shoots all the way up. All of a sudden, you had a 40,000 share seller show up. See a nice little red line out there? Pretty visual, isn't it? Once it came to that big seller, why did it stop going down? Why did it start going down? Oh, well, the big seller showed up. And then you could see how the stock came all the way back down to 19. Now, that's a pretty substantial drop. In an hour, it ran from 2040 down to 19. It's a dollar 40. How could you have prevented of not taking that, making converting a winner into a loser? Well, you could see that order is out there. Well, did you need an indicator to tell you that? Did an indicator tell you that 40,000 share sellers showed up with all these wonderful swiggly lines? You know, because they do make sense. <laughs> well, Robert, Rob has a funny question. If you, didn't, if you don't like CCL, make the money on, on CCL and then go on Royal Caribbean instead. You could, there you go. Robin, now you're thinking like a trader. Don't hold it against them, all right? So, but it's at the end of the day, Robert, why are we all here? We're here to make money. You know what I mean? Like if, if, you, if there's an industry that's moving, you know, listen, what's, the, what's going on right now? What's the big catastrophe? Hurricanes. We got this big hurricane in Florida. And by the way, I hope everyone is safe and hope the best for those people. I heard it's, gonna, it's worse than you expected. Uh, a lot of people are, you know, they, there's going to be a lot of people going to die from it. You know, my hearts and prayers to their families and stuff. Uh, but I, but we, our office is down in Florida, in Jacksonville. Uh, one of our instructors was right there in, in Tampa Bay. He left, you know, got out, thank God. You'll get to meet him in a trading room. But, um, but you know what? Unfortunately, that catastrophe, you can make an opportunity on that. What's going to benefit from it? I don't know, maybe Home Depot. People that start bordering their store up, Lowe's. You know, they said BJ's. You know, people got to buy food. You know, you know, as much as you're sitting there, at the end of the day, what are you supposed to do? Harp over it? Some of the biggest, most profitable, um, uh, you know, uh, days for me is catastrophes. 
Uh, the internet bubble back in 2000, the financial crisis in 2008, Hurricane Sandy. I don't know. Should I keep going on? The virus. You know, I mean, as much as the virus is so, so bad and we're working from home, you know, there was a great opportunity for you guys to make money. I think a lot of you here because that was the that was the recent biggest catastrophe that we had um, in the economy. Didn't work out too bad. But now is it working out OK? I don't know. I mean, we could sit here and talk politics and and recessions and all day long. But at the end of the day, you might like it. You might hate it. You might be might say you're biased, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, there's an opportunity out there to make money in the stock market. You got to look at it that way. Let's uh, let's see how level three can be used towards swing trading. So here you have a big buyer in the stock at thirty dollars, right? Huge buyer, uh, one hundred and fifty four thousand. Look what happened over the course of not only the day, but over the course of the month. Shopify runs off $30. Next day, boom, stock is already at 34 So you had day over here, and the second day you could see how it started from 30 Big buyer out there, and then the thing pops and thing takes off. So you can use this towards swing trading also. It's not just day trading. You can go back and you could shrink it. I think I have one stock here I could show you. Um, let me see if I'll find a good one here. Here's a really good one. How about this? You ready for this one? Let me bring up a stock for you. Hold on. Uh, here's a stock that we were trading today. SNTI. Oops, wrong one. Hold on. There it is, right here. Did anybody see SNTI today? Okay. Look at this stock right here. Great run up. 930 stock ran from $1.60 and went all the way to a price of $225. Okay. Why did the stock stop at $225? Does anybody know? Why $225? Let me draw a trend line right there for you. Why $225? Very good, Robert. Very good, Sam. You guys are catching on pretty quickly. Big seller, right? Well, how about if I was to tell you that I could have told you 30 minutes prior that the seller was there before it got there? Okay, let me go out there and let me show you what I mean. Oops, I hate doing that. First of all, I'm going to add a moving average, a stochastic. RSI. Ooh, I heard those are really important. Those are pretty cool. Oh, Shank and Money Flow, right? You heard about Shank and that thing on TV? Bollinger Bands. All right. Okay, you looking at this? All right. You want to see how much easier trading is? There was a seller around right before 10 o'clock for about 307,000 shares. Not 9,000, not 1,000. 370,000. He was out there at 10 o'clock this morning. Okay. Look what happened when it went from $1.60 and finally when it got there around 11 o'clock. You could have been prepared and have your limit order out there and got out there before it hit there because guess what? Then it dropped all the way back down to two bucks. Now, did the indicator tell you that? Did Shankin tell you that? Did the RSI tell you that? What the hell is this anyway? Miller, no. Now, let me just ask everybody. Did I confuse anybody yet? That's right, Robert. The seller, it was not filled, and he's still out there. But does that tell you on the, on, on the Shankin? Money flow? Does that tell you no momentum moving average? Did I, com did I confuse anybody? Did I lose anybody? Think about this. How long are we talking for? 30 minutes? Could you imagine what I would teach you in a week? Could you imagine if you knew this when you first got into the industry? Listen, this is not the Fausto uh, money flow, the Puglisi money flow, okay? This is not the Fausto Nacci. 
This is how Wall Street traders trade, okay? I was a Wall Street trader. I was a market maker. I live here in New York. If you came in late, you, if you saw my bio, okay, you'll see why we do the things we do. And why, why, you know, because the way I was trained, nothing has changed other than you don't have to get a job here in New York and be a trader and get licensed. You do this anywhere. But for some reason, you know, everybody wants that crystal ball. Stop with the crystal ball. Stop with the, with the newsletters. Stop with that. You got you to gotta trade. You don't want people to tell you what to buy and sell. You should know where to buy and sell it. Because, and someone has to teach you how to read that order out there. Because if you don't, you're going to be like everyone else here. I'm like, damn, the guy's still out there selling it? Because it's not going to tell you there because the way this tells me, it looks like it's going to break, it, break out pretty soon. But yeah, it will until that guy gets out. So holding overnight, very risky. Day trading also could be very risky. But the truth is 90% of traders fail. Why? Am I allowed to use the word stupidity? How about ignorance? Okay. You just got to know how to play the game. When you learn how to play the game, even when you lose money, you're going to love it because you'd be like, damn, the guy got me. But you know what? Tomorrow, I'm going to look for that 300,000 share seller again in one of the stocks that are in Fausto's trading room at Cyber Trading University because they've been around for 30 years. They're endorsed by every brokerage firm. They obviously are teaching something. And you know what? It makes sense. So even when you lose it, you're going to be say, you know what? Can't win every day. Can't win every day. But this is why people lose money in the market. And that's why people, but you know what? Everybody wants to get involved, but they just don't want to learn how to play the game the right way. Listen, it, took, it, 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 took the, it takes time to learn how to do this. One of the hardest things to teach is you know, bad habits. But if you're doing it every day and you just follow the buyers and sellers, eventually you're going to come to realize that you're making it more complicated than what it is. So what I'm looking to do is this. The way I learn how to become a very good trader is I trade with a team that I trust, which is my cyber group. And I want to invite all of you to see if this really does work in the real market conditions. Listen, I'm not here to kind of tell you and sell you all you know, some custom-made video that anybody could show them that they look like the greatest in the world. I want to show you in real time. I want to, and not only that, but I don't want to show you, you know, and, and sit there and brag, you know, hey, look how much money I made. It, don't worry. Don't count my money. First, I don't like egos, okay? I want you to see if other people make money. So I want to invite every single one of you to come in my cyber group room and see if other people are making money doing it. And see the fun that they're having, even when they're losing money. But the key is they lose very little. Because I don't want you to judge us on our winners. I want you to judge us on our losers and how few we have and how we control them. That is your biggest mistake that people make. Now, this is what we do, what we do here at Cybertrain University. We have a live audio broadcast. We broadcast live every morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. We actually do a lot of pre-market trading. We do a lot of after-market trading. We do live commentary. You're going to hear us go, getting in, getting out of positions. You're going to see traders in the room getting in, getting out of positions. We'll come back in the afternoon. Maybe the time zone might be different for you. You come in the afternoon. We do a live audio broadcast from 2.30 to 4. So we'll have a lot of fun to trade then also. And every Tuesday, we'll do a Q&A session. We'll ask everybody, send your emails, give us your questions. We'll go out there. We'll go on the market. We'll test it. We'll answer them. Listen, I don't like people losing money, but the way you stop losing money is you have to, you have to interact. If you don't ask, you're never going to know. You cannot be in denial. And these are just a couple of amazing things that we have to offer. We even got more. I'm going to give you access to our app where if you can't, watch it on a computer, you could do it on your phone. You'll have access to all our market, all our traders, our students, everybody. Okay. You could watch us trade right from your phone. Technology has been great. 
you know, but listen, you do one or the other. It's fine. Now, this is all I'm asking for. I am asking for a $9 donation. You're going to get all this for $9 for one whole week. I'm going to invite you in my trading room. You're going to get videos, workshops, everything. You're going to be able to talk to the staff, everything for a lousy, stinking $9. Okay? And this is what you're going to get with it. You're going to get a live trading every single day from 745 to 5 o'clock. You're going to get a crash course on day trading. You're going to get three workshops where I'm going to teach you how to read level three, time and sales, entries and exits. You're also going to get 100 hours of trading videos of strategies of, of the Traders Talk. You're going to get it for free. You're going to get it live, but you're also going to look at previous ones. You're also going to get access to my book. I will give you the ebook. So instead of spending $47, you can get the book. And you know what? It's a great read. It's a fast read. You know, it's not going to waste too much time. If you, if you could read, you know, the, you know, it'll probably take about an hour and a half, two hours to get through it. I did it on purpose so it could be a very quick read. And not only that, but for the first 20 people that register, I will personally talk to you on the phone. You know what's incredible? You're getting this all for nine dollars. Now the question people ask me is like, wait a minute, what's the catch? Are you going to hit me with like a, a $300 fee after a week? No, 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 no. Listen, the $9 is basically letting me know if you're a real person or not. That's it. I, listen, everybody here would probably come in and do it for free. I'm not looking for free people. You know why? Nothing is free in this world. And I don't think anybody here would want anybody work for free because that's all it's worth. How do you yell at somebody, tell them they're doing something wrong when they work for free? Okay? so. The $9 is a money back guarantee. It just gives me, it just gives me the, you know, tells me that you're a serious person and you go out there and, um, you know, let's just know, you know, for you that, that you're, you know, you're going to take it seriously. And you know what? If you don't like what we talk about, I'll give you $9 back. Okay. Um, it's for one, for one week. That's right, Jeffrey. For one week, I'm going to teach you level three, level four. You're going to get a free coaching class with me, okay, where well, you can actually talk to me personally. When's the last time you spoke to, I don't know, anyone ever take, I'm going to do a poll question. I'm just out of curiosity here. I always meant to, I forgot to ask this question here. How many here um, had education before? How many of you here, I'm just going to put a poll, self-taught, paid courses, have a coach? When's the last time the, the person that trained you, did you ever talk to him personally? Unless you probably spent like thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. Did you ever do a coaching class? Someone said, oh, I paid $9. Can I talk to the owner? No. Okay, look, look how many, look, I'm going to share the results. So listen, what's the worst thing that could happen? You learn something, right? What's the worst thing that could happen to you? Let me explain something to you. I'm a 12-time world champion. I beat every single school in the industry. I should have been a 25-time world champion. Half the people didn't even want to show up. But that's another story. I'm endorsed by every brokerage firm, TradeStation, TD Ameritrade, Thinkorswim, um, did training for Schwab, NASDAQ. When's the last time you heard that? How about this? I have a five-star rating on Google. When's the last time you heard that? I have an A-plus rating at the Better Business Bureau. When's the last time you heard that? Okay. If you want to know the truth about how to trade today's markets, here's your opportunity at a fraction of the cost. So go out there, make the investment. You don't have to start right away. Okay. Um, I mean, I recommend you do, you know, but come in there. Talk to your education advisor and go from there. Now, I got a couple of people that registered. I want to do a couple of shout outs because we usually, ban we usually get a lot of people that um, do the tw uh, get to the 20 pretty quickly. Here we go. So, uh, first of all, Ben Hamill, I just got your registration. Welcome aboard. Uh, Dario Palantino, Italian like me. Congratulations. Look forward to talking to you. Got yours. Uh, what else we got? Emily, Derek, got your registration from, was that Germany? Oh, wow. Okay. Robert Jenkins from Chicago, got your registration. 
Now, um, listen, very important when you fill this out. When you get to the second page, there's going to be a questionnaire. Please answer to your best of your knowledge. Um, if you took training before, let us know because we want to know what kind of style you were taught. So when you talk to our education advisors, they can advise you because we don't want you to go into this room and not knowing what you're talking about. Let us know how much money you're trading with. Want to make sure you're trading the right stocks. Let us know if you have a brokerage account. Do you have level three? There's only like five questions. The more you let us know, the more we can help answer you quickly, the better experience you can have being part of Cyber Trading University. All right? Now, um, if anyone has any questions, let me know. Adil, I see you answering questions. By the way, I didn't see you register yet. Craig, I didn't see you register yet. You're asking a lot of questions, but you didn't register yet. T. Miller did not see you register yet. Listen, what's the worst thing that could happen to you? That you learn something? Think about it. Do you want to still focus on the past or do you want to see the future? Do you want to see and be stuck in a stock where you're in a situation like this ST, this SNTI, not seeing a 310,000 share seller and not knowing he jumped in 30 minutes prior, or you want to use some indicator that's basically about 200 moving average, whatever the hell that is, and, and you're like two, three days out of the money. Come on, late fellow traders. It's time to stop going out there and pretending and start reacting. Um, Robert, and guess what? Regarding about your question before, he's still not filled. But the indicator didn't tell you that. The other the people out there, the 78% of you that took courses, did they tell you that? Um, now, a couple of questions. Mark has a question. Can I start at a later date? Absolutely, Mark. But this promo is for right now, okay? And it's not going to last, all right? Um, because we get hundreds of people that register. So if you register now, um, it, it doesn't start automatically. You have to talk to an education advisor here at CTU because what they're going to do is they want to do a walkthrough. They're not here to sell you anything. Don't worry about that, please. Um, we don't, we're not looking to sell you anything. If you don't want to continue with us, you shouldn't continue anybody. But if you want to start on Monday next week, maybe you're going away. Maybe you have to get surgery like me. I got to get knee surgery next week. You know what? You want to start in two weeks? Fine. Just let, let the education advisor know that. Um, that Jeff says I signed up uh, once before and I missed all but half a day, uh, which is why I'm asking when I can start. Right. No problem, Jeff. Like I told you, you could start whenever you want. Just let your education advisor know. That's fine. Listen, you got to talk to our staff. Listen, we even have our phone number up on here. You know what I mean? Like where, where are you actually going to be able to talk to somebody? It's not going to happen. Listen, we feel like if you're going to take us seriously, we'll take you seriously. A couple more shout outs right here I'd like to make out. Uh, Satan Converter just got your registration. Welcome aboard. Who else we got here registered? Daniel Hackins got your registration. David Holman got your registration. Welcome aboard. God, it's $9. I just showed you some that probably saved you $9,000. Could you imagine seeing it live in the market? Think about it. Knowing where and understanding how to find those stocks, working through big, the percentage gainers. Knowing how not to um, you know, trade through psychology, not making those mistakes is going to make you that much better of a trader. Knowing exactly how to follow the money and see where those orders how much is that worth to you? Is it worth $9? I hope so. Now, if some of you, like I have somebody saying, well, I trade options. Let me tell you, options? Are you serious? Who's more wealthy? The guy who owns the house or the guy who rents the house? Okay? You want to be a good options trader? You damn well better learn to trade the stock first because it's the movement of the stock that makes an option move. And for some of you here that are trading futures or whatever, listen. If you're not doing this for more than 30 to 90 days, 60 to 90 days, and you're not making money, you're obviously doing something that's not working out for you. Well, my guy told me, my mentor told me, you know, the market's going to go, uh, it takes a year. It doesn't take you a year. Can you imagine hiring an employee after a year to figure out if you're going to keep them or not? You probably know in a couple of days. 
Here's another stock that's making a big move. Beats. How about this stock right here? Stock's up a dollar, four dollar stock. This is driving me nuts. Hold on, I gotta take this off. Moving averages, shank in RSI, moving in. Look at this stock right here, fellow traders. Stock at 9:30 this morning ran from 390, 360. It's at 450. Um, here's our cyber group room. I'm gonna introduce you to. Look at all the traders. Look what they're doing. Look at our staff. Rich, Riz, uh, Rich, uh, one of the instructors here, and Josh Levelton. Look at that. Look at the stock going up. This is what you're going to see. Look at all the orders out there getting filled. Why is it going up? Who's making it go up? You got to follow the money. You got to follow the money. By the way, that stock again. S-A-N-T? Oh, geez. <gasps> Could have sold it at 213 Oh, my God. Now it's at $2. Why is it going down? I don't know. Maybe because there's a 310,000 share seller out there plus another 20000 plus another 9000 I don't know. What do you think? Okay? You got to know how to play the game. Make a $9 donation for an application. Let's show you how to do it, and let's start pretending and start reacting. Uh, Thomas says, I've been in the course. Uh, I, have, I have the course. Can I attend this again? It's been, uh, it's been stupid. It's okay. That's the, listen, as long as you're honest with yourself, Tom, you could take it over and over and over again. But you know what? Think about how much little I taught you now, how much better you'll be when you get to see why these things go up and down the way they do. Let me tell you something. Um, I just want to, be I want to be clear and I want to be compliant. Do not go out there and start saying, oh, Fausto told me about you know, NASDAQ Book Viewer. Let me go buy it. Listen, I didn't make any guarantees, any promises. I want to show it to you live. You'll do more harm than good to you if you don't let me show it to you. You want to go out there and turn things on your execution system? You know what? That's up to you, but I'm not taking any responsibility. It's not my, you, you know what? Let me show you how it works. But if you think you're going to go out there and take some free classes and you want to try it and then learn later, guess what? That didn't work too well for the 16-year-old that didn't take driver's ed, okay? And I know you, a lot of you being a responsible parent out there would never give a kid uh, the keys to a car unless you showed them how it works, all right? That's the same thing. Uh, no, Mark, there is no added cost. We are not going to charge you anything. That's it. Actually, I'll be happy to give you money back if you're not happy. How about that? Okay? So I know it's a ridiculous number, but it's only to show me that you're serious. Let me explain something to you. This will kind of – like, let me explain something to you as a trader. Do you want to go to a free concert or would you rather go to a paid concert? People are like, I like to go to a free concert. Yeah, well, guess what? It's the middle of Central Park. You got you heard what the you heard about the crime, right? So nobody's getting checked. You got all the bums out there that are gonna be there too. Do you want to watch a concert with a bunch of bums and thieves that are running around? Or would you rather have say, you know what, I have to weed out the people that don't want to that want it for free. At least I know there are serious people in there. And now I eliminated it to about less than five to ten percent of people that are more serious. That's the reason why we do this. We're not looking for free people. We're looking for serious people. Don't take it the wrong way. I know some of you might not like it and like, oh, maybe it's not your style. I understand. But you know what? You want to be around. You want to surround yourself with serious traders. If that was the case, every college would be free. It's not. Okay? Um, if that was the case, we know what we're, we're dealing with. So if you want to do it right, make that investment. With that said, um, I got to get ready to start class. I want to get ready for this afternoon. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for making this possible. The C2 staff, thank you very much for everything and, and every, all our partners for helping you get here. But, um, but your education is not done. So let's go out there. Let's make that investment and let's have some fun. Um, let's go out there, get the workshops, the traders talks, the live trading with me. And, uh, and, and let's see if this does work, really, the market conditions, all right? Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate your time and effort. 
and look forward to seeing you all in the trading room. Happy trading, everyone, and be safe.